Welcome back to Show Academy. This episode is short, sharp, and powerful, because we're going to master one of the most misunderstood parts of practical biology, variables. Now listen, this topic comes up everywhere in Paper 6. If you can't spot the variables, you lose marks even if the rest of your answer is perfect. But don't worry, I'm going to give you one rule that never fails. It's the show rule of thumb. DV is what you read, IV is what you feed, CVs are what you freeze. Okay. Before I explain the rule, I want you to imagine the dependent variable as the focus of attention. It's the corner everything else in the experiment moves around. This dependent variable is the one we measure to answer the main question of the experiment. But to measure this variable right, we need to change only one variable. And this is the independent variable. All the other variables in the experiment must be fixed, frozen, and these are called the control variables. Back to our rule of thumb. Number one, dependent variable, is what you read. Think about the thing you observe or measure at the end of the experiment. You read it from a ruler, thermometer, table, or color change. Examples, height of foam, temperature change, color intensity, number of bubbles, time taken for a reaction. You don't control the dependent variable, you just record it. Number two, independent variable is what you feed. This is the thing you change on purpose, the one variable you adjust to see how it affects the dependent variable. You're feeding the experiment this input. Examples, type of plant tissue, potato versus apple, concentration of acid, temperature of water bath, time in the bath, pH level of solution. You only change one independent variable per experiment. Always just one. Number three, control variables are what you freeze. These are everything else that could affect the results, but you don't let them. You keep them the same in all setups. You don't touch them, you freeze them. If you don't control these, your results might not be valid. Now let's apply this to real exam questions. Example 1. Here we have to investigate the effect of glucose concentration on the rate of anaerobic respiration in yeast. So what should I measure to know the rate of anaerobic respiration? Go to the end of the experiment. The output here is time. So the dependent variable is time taken for the blue color to disappear. Now what is the independent variable here? It's the variable I change. Here we feed the experiment with different concentrations of glucose solution. That's the variable who change. So, the independent variable equals glucose concentration. What do I freeze? Anything else, like temperature, volume, population, or type of yeast, volume of glucose solution, time for equilibration, volume, concentration, or number of drops of methylene blue. These are your control variables. Example 2. We have to investigate the effect of cooking time on the vitamin C content of water. So, what do I read here? Go to the end of the experiment. The data recorded is volume of DCPIP used. This is the dependent variable. What to feed here? We must feed the experiment with different cooking times, so the time the fruit is left in hot water is the independent variable. What to freeze? Volume of hot water, size or type of fruit, volume of sample taken. Time intervals between samples, here done every one minute. Shaking time, her fixed for five seconds. Same temperature of water, and using same equipment. These are the control variables. Example 3. We have to investigate the effect of acid concentration on the rate of diffusion in agar jelly. To know the rate of diffusion, what to read? Yes, height of the yellow agar jelly. This is the dependent variable. What to feed? We must feed the experiment with different concentrations of hydrochloric acid. That's the independent variable. What to freeze? Anything else must be fixed like volume of HCl added to each agar tube, temperature of water bath, time in water bath, same size, shape, and type of agar block, same concentration and amount of bromothamol blue, and use the same equipment. These are your control variables. Example 4. Here we have to investigate the activity of catalase in tissues from two different plants. Ask yourself what to read. 
I must measure the height of foam, so that's your dependent variable. What do I feed? We must feed the experiment with different types of plant tissue. So the type of plant tissue is the independent variable. What do I freeze? Anything else. Concentration of hydrogen peroxide. Volume of hydrogen peroxide. Time of reaction. Size and number of pieces of plant tissue. All of these are control variables. Now you've got it. Every time you face a practical question, ask yourself, what am I measuring? That's your dependent variable. What am I changing? That's your independent variable. What must I keep the same? Those are your control variables. One bonus challenge here if you want to test if you've really got this, a question to try on your own. A student investigates the effect of pH on the activity of an enzyme that breaks down starch. Now pause and write. What's the dependent variable? What's the independent variable? List at least three control variables. Then check the pinned comment for the answer. And if this helped, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more show-style science hacks that score. See you in the next one.